So you want to invest in Web3, but you don't know what tokens to buy, you can use Swissborg's Thematics instead. They select a collection of the best performing Web3 tokens and rebalance them upon performance. So you don't need to worry about going all in on an absolute steaming turd. Sounds good to me. Swissborg. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at Bitcoin, shall we, and uh, the broader picture, the, the uh, traditional market situation. So we'll have a quick look at that. So still the same old deal with the euro, moved into the golden cross, rebound, and basically made uh, almost close to a new local high, back up to that 110 area. So we got that, we were talking about that last week, so now we're there. So that's fine, the euro's still reasonably good. On the daily, nothing to really be concerned about, to be honest with you. Uh, and now we've got the Bollinger Band Center crossing up above that area of uh, major support. Uh, the pump signal's still in place. So, I mean, the euro is still looking good. So that's going to keep the Dixie down for the for the time being. Uh, that's uh, taking its sweet time to, to reset. Uh, there's no point looking at the four hour. I mean, it's the same, same analysis, really. So it's, lo it's looking okay. It's looking, looking pretty good. S&P futures then, so the pre-market. Uh, Golden Cross, we've moved down into the Bollinger Band Center. So if there's a position to take, this, I suppose, is going to be it. Uh, in the short term between here and the 21 exponential so really not much between it uh, and like I say this this isn't based on anything other than a 65% more likely uh, possibility to stay above this area when coming in to test it we had a bit of a wiggly day yesterday and a rejection from the seven uh, simple moving average yesterday and today so yeah we're being sandwiched into what looks like a symmetrical triangle on the daily term time frame uh, are we going to be able to look at the four hourly or are you going to be uh, Right, this is just annoying, isn't it? Right, let's just get let's get it on here. Let's let's, let's have a look because I, I do want to see. Um, we'll we'll actually have a look at the 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 uh, the, the real S and P as we're not particularly too bothered about the uh, the pre market really on the four hourly then. So yeah, there's a battle taking place on the four hourly, basically in the middle of no man's land. Uh, we've we've got the ten exponential above us. We've got the twenty one exponential below us. And again, even on the four hourly, we're forming a symmetrical triangle. So uh, there, there's there's nothing really other than a, a battle between these two. I think with the euro looking quite good, it does add a bit more weight to the idea that this actually does bounce. But some stocks have been beaten up pretty bad. Uh, Tesla to be one because they're you know they're, they're blowing up their rockets at the moment. So uh, it, it's moments like that that do impact indices, which then do have a, an effect across all boards. And, and so so yeah, we, we, we've got to look at that. Even Coinbase stock is down massively. There's there's a lot of stocks that are down. So stocks are still struggling at the moment now. Um, well, I say struggling. They've done pretty well for us in all fairness. They're resetting and actually looking pretty tired. So this is gold. Gold, as far as I'm concerned, has got the highest correlation to Bitcoin, currently speaking. Um, still stronger, uh, but the, the charts more or less are a carbon copy, but this is a stronger chart. So we're down into the 200 exponential, just like the euro, rebounded and, and up, up and away. Now, for two days in a row now, we've been below the Bollinger Band Center, so 65% more likely to stay below it. So that offers further downside here. And, as, and again, you can see the rejection on it right now. So, yeah, a rejection from these levels isn't a death sentence. It's not because this is a bullish chart. We're above most moving averages of significance with divergences taking place between the 50s and the 200s. So as far as this is concerned, it's basically a pullback that we should look to take advantage of. Uh, like we tried with Bitcoin and like we would try with anything else, just like we tried uh, and succeeded in, in the original one here. Same with the euro. So I'll be looking for the same thing to apply here. So looking for maybe a pullback down towards 1950. Uh, and uh, maybe a bounce from there and if uh, we're able to look at this on a four hourly or is it just gonna nah, there's no point but again the daily time frames are the, are the best ones to look at now here we go for the total two total market cap excluding bitcoin moving down into a first well not the first we did have one here where we had a decent reaction the golden cross retest uh, from that point there we actually did a 17 percent rally yeah 17 percent 17 and a half percent rally um, so that, that was pretty decent, I suppose, for what it was worth. Now we're coming down to retest it once again, uh, and that figure would be down at uh, 576 billion, uh, just short of 577 billion. So that would be an area of across the board for all markets, uh, all crypto market, basically, to have a balance from. And so if that's the case, we're really talking uh, baby steps from, from where we are right now. Uh, we are talking about another 1.5% move across the board. So if that's the case, let's have a look at Bitcoin. We're on a one hourly chart, still fighting this little area that we're in. This area is basically your 50 exponential moving average on the daily. And um, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five days in a row. 
Now, obviously, we're below Bollinger Band, below uh, other moving averages of significance. There's only a 200 that's below us, sitting around 24,000, which is fine. And like I say, uh, you know, we, we uh, scaled into this at uh, this level at 21,500 is where I bought. Uh, and I still think that that's pretty much a, a, a you know, a, a, not, not a safe bet to keep hold of those spot positions, but relatively safe in all fairness. So I'm not looking to sell those. The only thing I'll be looking to do, because obviously I scaled into alts to the tune of uh, the, um, I was going to apply 50% of the bitcoins that I bought around those areas into alts, scaled in 30%, the other 20%, uh, I've not got around to doing it because I'm waiting for a better setup. The alt season, we did give it a three week period to actually play. Uh, we gave it a contingency of four. Now we, we, we saw five wasn't materializing, now we're in week six, it doesn't seem to be happening. So if anything, we're gonna be looking at the total two for a market bounce, but it's still a Bitcoin driven, uh, market so Bitcoin still being the main thing so I'll keep 70% of the Bitcoin I bought at 21,000 and look to rotate it probably at a later date with a bit more um, with setups that are presented particularly on altcoin charts and if you're interested in those we're doing a live stream tonight on the Patreon so feel free to join there's links in the description below so we'll have a look at all the altcoins you want to look at or stocks or whatever but yeah, uh, until we see some, uh, some some setups on individual charts right now, the whole market as one might bounce on the total two. But I think if it's going to bounce around there, uh, Bitcoin needs to bounce too. So you might, I'm going to keep that 70% of Bitcoin as Bitcoin for the time being and uh, rotate into alts when things become a, a bit more clearer. Right, so yeah, with Bitcoin here, like I say, that 50 exponential is holding so far, but yeah, we tested it five days in a row. Usually the rule is the more times you touch a support or the more times you touch a resistance, the more likely it is to break. So I'm not too optimistic about the way that this is going to resolve in the short term. I do have some bullish diversions since being down here on the one hourly, quite pronounced in fact, and we did dip our toe a little bit further uh, below the trend and uh, that generated quite a decent drive of bullish diversion we, and we had a, a fair odd bounce but still still more or less in a consolidation downtrend um, scenario. So let's finish off with the four hourly with an incoming death cross. Now uh, just to spin it on its head, death crosses are not good right just like golden crosses um are not bad right they are, they are good but what you'll often find uh, when you have a golden cross or a death cross like i've shown on all these charts that we've traded since since the beginning of the year and traded successfully based on golden crosses is that the the golden cross itself or the death cross itself is not usually the instigator of further downside immediately uh, what you'll find is it's more likely that it's showing that the, there's a trend strengthening in this direction which is down but it's not uncommon, in fact, it's relatively common to see a retest of that cross when we come up to it, all right? Uh, well, so when it happens, we might have a little bit of a move because people are trying to play the cross and then they're likely to get washed out by a retest of it just to see if it's genuine because they're not always genuine. We can backtest this just even in the golden cross scenarios, really. Let's have a little look at how this has performed uh, just, just in recent price action. So uh, being the four hourly, what we've got down here. So actually this is quite a strong one. So yeah, but <laughs> Bitcoin rallied pretty hard. Um, but yeah, here's, here's an example of a golden cross. Uh, the price action was already done, followed by a big dump. So getting washed out with anyone trying to play the golden cross. If you want to try and play this, you try and play it here uh, on a retest of it. Uh, and you put your stop loss or you monitor it because you don't know if it's genuine. And then lo and behold, big dump down so i suppose that's the sort of example it's not the greatest one but i'm just looking at recent history golden cross people will be looking to play that it's bullish you try and take a position on it on a retest okay it started to work out and it failed and again it doesn't take long to know if you're wrong because you know that if you start going down below the 200 exponential it's over with so that was a golden cross and it ended up with a giant dump. So strange things have happened. And again, the sentiment, generally speaking, across the board, people are thinking this is really bearish right now. I think it's bearish in the short term. It doesn't look particularly good in the short term, but when you've got a, a death crossing coming, I would actually favor a retest of that when it happens rather than immediate downside. And look, if we retest that, and for whatever reason we break it, then it ends up being a bear trap. And that's the sort of thing I was talking about yesterday. So actually, we'll just go back to uh, give you the uh, the price of that uh, 200 exponential, which is currently sitting at 28,000, almost 28,800. It's going to be de declining sl slowly because we're below it right now. So 28,800. And if we were to mark that off on this chart, um, 
28,100, sorry. Yeah, we've got a 10 exponential approaching that area. Uh, but if we also think about previous price action, there's quite a fair bit around the 28,000 that you could look at on a horizontal time frame. It's not the greatest setup in the world. It's a little bit hopium, but it's an expectation that a, go a death cross will instigate a retest of it, bringing us back up to 28,000. Again, look, from where we are right now, 27,360, there's not much to it. So you should expect a rejection from it initially. To be, to be honest, that's what you'd expect. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bearish retest for further downside if the trend strengthens. But closures on the four hourly above 28,100, above that 200 exponential, and um, might end up being the, like a pretty decent bear trap on a four hourly. And if that's the case, then all we really need to do is reclaim that 29,000 and then it'll be a really decent bear trap and end up being a V-shaped recovery, which in, yeah, in, in all fairness, would just be yet again another retest of the overall picture which is a golden cross retest on a daily where bigger yeah bigger bigger moves are going to be generated on a on a on a daily if this all holds but again yeah it's uh it, it, it it's it's all gonna it's gonna be lights out for a little while if we lose this area and the next major area of significance for me would be all the way down here to around twenty four thousand ish area twenty four thousand one hundred and again that coincides with this horizontal that we've had tops and and uh, and launches from and over the next few days towards the end of this week this is going to be like like a really decent area to think about taking a position um and again like i'm 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 in favor of this sort of you know breaking down from here obviously and going into a much longer drawn out consolidation that's all fine as well um uh, but uh, but each one of these areas while being approached are areas that we should think about maybe taking positions in uh, and again like i'm i'm all stocked up on on bitcoin i'm not going to be buying any more at higher levels than i bought it from that's just kind of madness if anything you know from a spot position uh, i'll be looking to rotate uh, the bitcoins that i got into altcoins when the time is right uh, and i would only really think about buying more bitcoin at this point now if we did break back down into the teens in a catastrophic um collapse of uh, of all markets which at the moment it doesn't look like that's the sort of thing that's going to happen if anything we're just pulling back and we're pulling back into areas on the chart which seem to be holding for the most part now in what is a continued uptrend and i think i said this in the past uh, the last few days all we really need to think about so far is to take off all the noise and recognize that we're still a series of low high higher low higher high higher low and uh, and it's basically an uptrend that's what we're looking at here and the uptrend remains an uptrend until it falls down into a, a downtrend this uh, diagonal trend line that i've just drawn in here although it's very messy and we can just see it more or less more or less is going to be a uh, a support and and it's a weekly 21 exponential and uh, we've got a 200 exponential on a weekly sitting here at 24,000. There's a lot going on below us. So many supports kind of spoiled for choice. So to expect this to come down into its own shadow where it began and lower, it's very unrealistic. To expect it to continue with this uptrend is probably the most realistic. And recognize we are looking at a weekly here, Captain Noobmaster. Weekly. So you can go back to bed now. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, there's plenty of time for this to materialize into higher highs and higher lows over several years. So you go back into hibernation. That's fine. Right. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.